الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Continue inshallah ta'ala with the tafsir of uh, the surahs from uh, Amma Yitasa'aloon all the way to uh, surah uh, Al-Duha or surah Al-Layl which is this part of this course inshallah ta'ala and reach surah Al-Tariq surah Al-Tariq which is surah number 86 uh, surah Al-Tariq and uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us benefit of what we hear and what we uh, listen to and uh, by the way the knowledge of the deen of Allah is not something that a person would get in one day or two days or a few days it's something that a person needs to have the patience and the sincerity uh, to seek the knowledge one verse at a time one hadith at a time and to be patient with that and the benefit of that is to have the fear of Allah and to know about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, that would make the person obedient and humble oneself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so being sincere, being patient, being consistent, it's all good signs. But when a person would, you know, once in a while uh, be upon something, this is not really a good sign, whatever subject that a person is upon. So um, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us steadfastness upon the deen of Allah. Surah uh, At-Tariq, and At-Tariq means the, the, as we will see, inshallah ta'ala, the meaning of it, the, the right comer, the night comer, the bright star or so. Uh, and it's called a tariq because of it's mentioned in the first ayah of Sama'i wa tariq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by that in the first verse. And we'll talk about that inshallah ta'ala. But first, uh, it was said that surah at tariq uh, was, was surah number uh, 36 in the order of being revealed. Came down after surah al-balad and before Surat Al-Qamar. So it came down after Surat Al-Balad and before Surat Al-Qamar. Uh, so this is Surat Al-Tariq, and it's called Al-Tariq or As-Sama'i wa Al-Tariq. You know, some call it As-Sama'i wa Al-Tariq. And it starts like Surat Al-Buruj before it, Was-Sama'i wa Al-Tariq, like Was-Sama'i that Buruj. And it, as we will see, talks about the resurrection and and uh, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and mentioning the Qur'an. Uh, and that's how important it is for us to be connected to the Qur'an, to the book of Allah, and to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's start, inshallah ta'ala, with reciting the ayat of the surah. Um, and it's um, 17 verses. So let's start, inshallah ta'ala. Repeat after me and raise your voice so that we can learn how to recite it properly. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والسماء والطارق وما أدراك ما الطارق النجم الثاقب إن كل نفس لما عليها حافظ فلينظر الإنسان مما خلق خلق من ماء دافق يخرج من بين الصلب والترائب إنه على رجعه لقادر يوم تبل السرائر فما له من قوة ولا ناصر. So these are the first ten verses, and والسماء four counts والطارق قاف at the end قلقلة we move it 
وما أد وما أدراك وما أدراك ما الطارق make sure that the letters are also given it right النجم الثاقب النجم the noon with شدة takes two counts and the جيم قلقلة النج النجم الثاقب and الثاقب the thaa your tongue goes out not as sa as tha in كل نفس in كل إخفاء in كل نفس نفس لما without a tone with me with شدة لما عليها حافظ حافظ and the ضاء is heavy فاليوم that's إخفاء فلينظر ال another إخفاء سان مما خلق خلق من ماء دافق مد ماء and then التنوين after the دال that's إخفاء يخرج من بين الصلب والترائب والت والترائب إنه على راجعه لا قادر لام is light قاف is heavy لا قادر and the دال is light and the راء is light يوم تب تب للسرائر the the right is light at the end فما له من قوة ولا ناصر so when we look at the ayat here briefly from تفسير من سعد يعني تفسير ميسر الله سبحانه وتعالى swearing by السماء والطارق السماء and the طارق and then he explains, it's explained the next verse, what is a tariq. So by the skies and a tariq, by the heavens and a tariq. And a tariq is the one that knocks or the one that try to get into something. And here it refers to an najm al the uh, an najm or the star, um, والسماء والطارق وما أدرك ما الطارق of course and what you know about الطارق and that's always always as we see in the Quran when that is mentioned what is meant by that is التهويل to make the reciter you know exalt what is being mentioned do you know what الطارق is it's not a small thing it's not a simple thing it's a huge thing what is it النجم الثاقب the star of piercing or of brightness so النجم الثاقب and a thaqib, the brightness of it that uh, causes the light to penetrate. And that's what a thaqib means. We'll talk about it linguistically. That his light penetrates. A thaqib, a najimu thaqib. So whether it's a specific uh, star or in general. And it's called a tariq because it comes at night. And a tariq is when someone knocks on your door at night. That's what a tariq is. Not the one that would uh, knocks on the door during the day, but specifically during the night. In kullu nafsin lamma alayha hafiv, which means that uh, every, there is no human being but has a protector over him. You know, there is a, always a protection for the human beings. In kullu nafs. That means there is no nafs. Unless there's a hafid or a guardian or a protector uh, for this nafs. Guarding to guard or to write the good deeds and the bad deeds, the angels refers to the angels, and the people will be recompensed or rewarded according to what has been recorded. In kullu nafsi lamma alayha hafid, which is uh, you know such a powerful verse. In kullu nafsi lamma alayha hafid, that means. There is no uh, nafs, there is no soul unless there is, uh, and this is the the, the response of the of the oath of the oath, right? So there is no nafs unless there is a hafil, there is someone that is guarding, writing, recording its actions, and this is a major thing, and that's why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sweared by uh, something big and something powerful, and then. Um, <clears throat> Um, and this is what al-hafiz means in kullu nafsin lamma alayha hafiz then after that it says فَلْيَنْظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ مِمَّ خُلِقَ and let the human being uh, look let him reflect upon what he's been created from because he's makhluk his creation of Allah what he was created from so to uh, to reflect upon what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us from 
فلينظر الانسان let the human being look from where he was created خلق من ماء دافق he was created from a gushing water or a seminal fluid يخرج من بين الصلب والترائب that it uh, comes out uh, this, uh, this, this origin of the human being where it's coming from proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs right between the backbones and the ribs you know this is where it's coming from يخرج من بين الصلب والترائب إنه على رجعه لقادر that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to bring him back to life the one that created him from uh, this uh, gushing fluid and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned where it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that is able of recreating him resurrecting him after uh, the person dies and decays innahu ala raji'ihi laqadir innahu indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala raji'ihi on the matter of him to return laqadir by Allah definitely no doubt he is qadir he is able يَوْمَ تُبِلَ السَّرَائِرِ When he's going to be resurrected in the day when all the secrets will be examined or will be made apparent and clear. يَوْمَ تُبِلَ السَّرَائِرِ So um, the one that created the human being from such uh, creation, he's the one, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is able to resurrect him. يَوْمَ تُبِلَ السَّرَائِرِ On the day when the sarair, the sarair is the plural of sir, the secrets. What was hidden will be examined. And this is, uh, relate this to uh, the half of everything is recorded. So the secrets, everything will be exposed in the Day of Judgment. Which means there is no then, in the Day of Judgment, no one has power nor any helper for the human being. Because it's only their deeds, good deeds and the bad deeds. So, مِنْ قُوَّةٍ He has no power to push away from himself any harm. وَلَا نَاصِرْ And no one external uh, helper to help him in his situation. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by other uh, things afterwards, which is something that we would talk about inshallah ta'ala next time. So, uh, this is uh, the, the tafsir of the ayat very briefly. When we look at the, at the verses and the words and Inshallah Ta'ala will get into more deeper of it and, and the, the benefits that we learn from uh, the verses. But looking, looking at the words, وَالسَّمَاءِ وَالطَّارِقِ Waw is waw al-qasam, right? Swearing by. And by the sama and sama is anything that is above from seen mim waw. So anything that is above and sama the skies, the heavens. وَالطَّارِقِ And a tariq from the night kamr or the, from taraqa. Taraqa is when you knock someone's door at night. And a tariq is the path because you're you're stepping on it, you're walking on it, right? So and a tariq the way and so on, and uh, you know, and uh, so this is uh, refers to the night comer, which is basically the stars or a specific star. And what do you know about a tariq? Again, as we said, to uh, get to the uh, to exalt it, it's a major thing. What is a tariq? An najmu, the star. An najmu from the meaning of the star. A thaqib, a thaqib, the piercing one. So an najmu, which is the the star, and um, and it's uh, it it comes from the meaning of when something comes out, and that's what the stars are, right? Or comes when when something comes. So an najmu, a thaqib, a thaqib again is the piercing, is the penetrating one. From thaqab and a thuqb is the hole in the in the wall, for example, right? So it comes from the piercing light, very strong in light. And najmu thaqib. So whether it's the specific one, uh, no star, this star, that star, you know, najmu uh, thaqib. In kullu nafsin, indeed, that every soul, kull nafs soul, in kullu nafsin lama lama, uh, it's like an exception, but. Alayha upon it or over it, Hafid a protector or guardian. So there's a guardian from Hafidah, Hafidun and so on. Falyandur, so let's see Nadara from looking. Falyandur in San, the man, Mimma Khulik, Mimma from what? It's supposed to be Minma, but there's no elephant at the end, so you have to make sure that you don't stretch it. 
مما خلق from what he has been خلق created from خلق خلق he was created من from ما in دافق ما is water دافق uh, ejected or uh, gushing uh, gush out gush out with uh, you know a دافق is when something comes out quickly so uh, from دال فاء قاف right this is a ما الدافق this is how it comes out ما uh, اندافق يخرج it comes out comes forth من from بين between الصلب الصلب from صاد لام باء با, which is the الصلب is something strong something that is uh, uh, the as, as for example they say uh, the حديد or the iron is صلب that means it's very strong so it comes from the backbone تخرج uh, من بين الصلب uh, and this is the backbone of the person what tarab and at tarab the ribs from ta ra bi ba and comes from tarab the dust and so on this refers to one's ribs innahu indeed he is ala to raji'ihi him returning raji'i he raji'ihi him returning la qadir is able from qadir qadara Yawma, on the day, Tubila. Tubila will be tested from Ba' Lam Waw. Al-Bala is trials, right? So Tubla, what is Tubla? What is going to be tested? as sarair or the secrets. From Sin Ra, Ra. as sarair the secrets. Fama lahu, then not lahu for him, min any quwa. Quwa power from Qaf Waw, ya. Wala and not Nasir. Nasir, helper. Noon uh, Saad Ya yeah, comes from Nasr. We talked about Al Nasr also. Uh, so, this is uh, the, the precise words of uh, the Surah that gives the, the powerful you know, meanings of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swearing by things that people see with their own eyes and uh, the, the stars, the brightest of the stars. And uh, how that the perfect creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be by necessity uh, does not make people just live ignorantly in this life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not, this, did not create this powerful creation for nothing. So it's created by Allah and it's a perfect creation of Allah. So there's a purpose of the creation of the human beings. So therefore people need to perfect their actions. Right, there's a relationship between the perfect creation of Allah and actions should be done perfectly. Allah created the heavens and the earth to test you who among you are the best in their actions. Because he created the best creation, therefore your actions should be the best actions to fulfill the purpose of your life, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and, and reminding the human being that everything is recorded. The angels, they're recording everything. And recording, that means it's going to be, a person will be questioned. That's why يَوْمَ تُبِلَ السَّرَائِرِ The sara'ir or the, the secrets will be examined. right? And uh, people will get to see what they did of their actions. So when we look at the, the benefits is to establish the belief in the hereafter. You know that this life is only a temporary one and everybody is tested in this life and everything is recorded. That uh, also the actions are being recorded. Our actions are being recorded. And nothing is being missed. right? And therefore, we have to make sure that we deal with our actions from that perspective. If a person wants to remove a bad deed in their record, they should repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how to wipe it away and to remove it. Can it be removed? Yes. If a person repents to Allah. As the Prophet ﷺ said, The one that repents from the sin as if there's no sin for him. Or to replace it with a good deed. Because everything is recorded and it doesn't matter how old it was. You know, even if it's 50 years from now, it's recorded. So what can we do about it now? Repent to Allah sincerely. Take the means to wipe it away. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind the human beings from where they're created from so that they humble themselves to Allah. Because the arrogance is this destructive sin that prevents people from following the truth. They see the truth, they know the truth, and they don't follow it because of the arrogance. That's the sin of Iblis. That's the sin of Fir'aun. And that's something that is, there's a seed for it in every human being. Unless they humble themselves, 
to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So remind, one of the ways to, 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 take, to get the person away from being carried away in arrogance is to remember where he was created from and how the, the, the subject of his creation or what the, the material that he was created from. Dirty drop. And that's why even as it's mentioned, you know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about definitely a person will be resurrected and that's one of the clear evidence is when a human being created from this, therefore it's the easiest thing for them to be resurrected. Uh, but to warn, a severe warning against the secrets because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's done openly and what's done secretly. So then the ayah, ayah that we should always remember. The day of Al-Qiyamah, the secrets will be tested, will be exposed. It might not be exposed in this life, but it will be exposed in the day of judgment. And nobody can hide it. So it's been recorded, everything is recorded, and they're <coughs> plotting in, in evil, having bad intentions. Uh, or a person being in the state of kufr or hypocrisy, being different than what a person shows to the people, all of that will be expo exposed in the day of judgment. So to warn against the secrets, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing everything and he's the all witnesser of subhanahu wa So he witnesses everything that a person do is all seer subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, no power, no one to help. No power in oneself, no external help. These are the two things that would help the person in this life. That you yourself have strength within your own self or someone else would help you. None of that would be in the day of judgment. Everybody return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And everybody will uh, be in need of the help from Allah. And the help from Allah is to be given to those who are obedient to Allah. So verses that has great benefit, of course, when we reflect upon them and take the time to make them enter our hearts and to be sincere in dealing with the book of Allah so that it gives us strength and steadfastness upon the deen of Allah. We'll stop here, inshallah ta'ala. And uh, there are, of course, the verses can be dealt with so much details and precision of the origin of the, of the human beings and so on. But again, we need to more focus on the benefit of actions and how can we act according to what we learn from the Quran. So next time, inshallah ta'ala, we'll continue with Surah Al-Tariq. And if you don't have it memorized, memorize it, inshallah. And uh, we'll reflect more upon the benefits that we learn uh, from uh, these verses. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who their iman is increased by reading the book of Allah. Barakallahu feekum. Wa sallallahu sallam barakallahu muhammad wa sahabi wa sallam. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.